Hello, welcome. This is the Great Commission Update. I'm Rusty Humphreys, and he is Greg Kelly, the CEO of World Mission. And Greg, always good to see you getting ready for our big trip, getting, you know, ready. I keep getting nervous. Oh my goodness, no reason to be nervous. It's gonna be amazing, I Rusty. Know. And how many people get the opportunity to go to Bangladesh and Nepal uh, in the same trip? So, not many, uh, not many. Not, and, it's, not many. and it's hard to even explain people. They kind of go, you know, why are you doing it? And I explain about the Great Commission and the treasures and what we're doing. Yeah. And then, you know, how hard it is to get in there. You know, there's no comprehension. Oh, you're just going to like just fly the airplane, do take American Airlines, go right there. And then they get the... <laughs> pick you up in a limo and take you out. I mean, it, there's no comprehension. No, and even getting around from point A to point B in Bangladesh, we'll be we'll be flying actually using some commuter planes. But if you were to drive, I was talking to our guy just the other day, and he was saying, okay, brother, so if you go into Dhaka, which is the, the main city where we'll be flying into, and then drove to these places, it would take you 12 hours to drive there. Uh, you fly, it would be like, you know, half an hour. I mean, the, the traffic is just horrific in that uh, it's i think we talked last time so it's more about the traffic than it is about the distance yeah, okay right so bangladesh is the uh rickshaw capital of the world right so right. you've got you know all these rickshaws everywhere but it's also a delta area and what i mean by that is the they all Indian take Ocean delta planes up in there delta no. planes i don't delta know no. they, they, yeah right exactly what's but, a delta you know, plane they got the 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 water it's so the grade of the country is so much at sea level and you've got all these uh, little inlets or the, the delta area, they call it. Um, it's water makes it very difficult. So there's not, of course, bridges that go everywhere. So you have to be very um, selective in the routes that you take. But you can get back up. It, I guess it makes L.A., Atlanta, Chicago look like a piece of cake, uh, wow. the traffic. So okay. we're, we'll be flying uh, to get to the main places that we go to. Otherwise, the reality is is that if you do a trip to Bangladesh and see all the things we'll be seeing and we'll be east, west, north, south, uh, and, you know, it could take you two weeks and we'll be doing it in, you know, about five days, basically. Wow. You know, part of me, I'm, I'm when I traveled before, and I've traveled a lot, I, I like to, you know, really study up on things. And I kind of don't want to do that this time. Part of me is like, I, I kind of want to just be surprised. I don't know. What do you think? I think you just have that much confidence in me. That's what I think. And that's why you're I not. do. <laughs> I do. Well, I mean, you know, when I started studying, you know, we're taking a thing called the Poon Trail. Yep. Exactly. Um, and Poon uh, Hill. Poon, well, there's a, it's a trail, though, isn't it? Yep. Poon Hill. Yeah. Route. Yeah, exactly. OK. Um, and I, I, you know, watch a couple of videos on that. And it's that did make me feel a little bit better. Okay. Good. Um, Bangladesh, I have not really looked into. Bangladesh is a country, or a part of the of a country. It's it's a country. Here's the thing about these kind of trips: there, you can continue to do research uh, for weeks and weeks and weeks leading up to it. And the the first lesson we teach everybody who goes on a trip with the world mission is we teach them the fundamental lesson of missions. It's one word. That word is flexible. So we, we always have to be flexible when we're doing things because there's always sort of, uh, you, know, you know, surprises or things that you're not anticipating exactly. I thought we we're going to go this day. Well, because there's a the weather, you know, that, that came in that we didn't realize or someone was sick or, uh, you know, they had to call it off for different reasons. There was a roadblock. There was demonstrations. I mean, whatever it is. So well, I'm so the perfect guy for that. I totally get that going well, in. Yeah, Most yeah. people, when I tell them, you know, so what are you doing on this day? And it's like, guys, and, and the way I have to explain it is, this isn't my trip. You know, yeah. I'm going along for the ride. I'm going along to document it, film it, uh, bring back some stuff for a show. I, I'm not driving the bus. So well, I can't you, tell you what I'm doing on Thursday, the second week. <laughs> right? Nor can I exactly. Right. I know that, you know, part of the, the awesome opportunity that you and I are going to have is we're going to be visiting these refugee camps where the Rohingyas are at. Uh, and we're going to meet some people that have endured some of the harshest uh, cruelty uh, of humanity uh, in our lifetime. I mean, literally. I mean, what these people have endured. The, the UN said, Rusty, three years ago, it's genocide. What happened to the, the Rohingya is genocide uh, by the Burmese government. And so 
you know, these, these people have endured a lot of suffering and, uh, you know, what a privilege for us to go in there, uh, and capture. You're right. I mean, I think one of the blessings for our great commission update, uh, audience and family is that we, you and I are going to capture what's going on there. We're going to bring it back, uh, you know, on future shows. We're going to do recording right from there. It's going to be pretty cool. Bring yeah. everybody to us. And, uh, so I'm getting new equipment. It's costing me a lot of money. No, no one's paying for it, but me. And it's okay. We're going to make it really good. And yes. now one thing I think we're probably going to miss a couple of shows because we're going to be gone. Yeah. We're trying to get a couple done in advance, but I don't know if we're going to get them all done. So if we're missing a week or two, um, please forgive us. Number one, number two, make sure you come back. Yeah, Sometimes sure. it's easy to forget, but one of the things I'm going to try to do is because <laughs> there is some internet there, right? Yes. Some. yes. On and off, on and off, on and, and off. So, but I probably can't bring my whole computer. Yeah. So what I think I'm going to try to do is like with Greg, many shows hmm. that we might try to upload to YouTube. And then our friends at the range will probably try to get it on Roku and fire TV and those other places. They may be shorter just mm -hmm. depending on, but the podcast might be missing. Cause that's a whole other process, Greg. It's, yeah. A lot of moving pictures to oh. do the Great Commission update, but we wanted, but we want to kind of do this. I'd like to do as many, you know, little updates as possible. You yeah. know, but. well, I mean, every day there's going to be all these mini stories that are going on, so I think that's a perfect avenue for us, to, you know, to, to just drop in, you know, little short little stories of of interviews, people who have been impacted by the treasure. We're going to be talking about the medical strategy and and people's lives who have been impacted by that. You'll we'll see the John three sixteen eye doctor in person. That's going to be super cool. Who's the John 316 eye doctor? Well, so when, you know, picture yourself, you go to the, the eye doctor and you go in there and they put those, you know, big goggles on you and that read the first line, second line, third line. Uh, well, in Bangladesh and the refugee camps, we go in there and we do the same thing, but our screen that is first line, second line, third line is John 316 written out in their language. And well, so you, interesting. you have Muslim people that are reading for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And who's, and then we say, well, let's try another set. Try these on. Okay. Read it again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. It's our John 316 uh, eyeglass strategy. And it actually, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. How the Lord Man, uses I never that. heard, I never heard of that one. That's you, you guys are, are moving. You got things going. <laughs> I like it. Um, yes. now Bangladesh and Nepal, they're, they're very difficult to reach. But another place that's even more, it's not as difficult to reach from a, I guess, from a transportation point of view, but it's hard to get in there. And it's the center, ground zero for the unreached, and that's India, right? Yep. That's right. That's right. We, why why we, is that so hard to, un, to reach? Well, I think that just the culture in there is just so entrenched, the Hindu culture. Um, you probably, most people wouldn't realize this. On the Great Commission Update, we talk about when Jesus said, go make disciples of all nations, of course, at the time he said that, countries didn't exist. But so many times when we look at missions and the Great Commission in general, we look at it through the lens of a country. I'm doing ministry in Guatemala. I'm doing ministry in Uganda, in India. But the crazy thing about India, Rusty, is that inside this one country, you've got something like 2,700 different nations, many of them their own language. And so although Hindi uh, is the, the national language, along with English, uh, you'll, you'll be able to, if you're in the northern part, you'll, you're just fine uh, with Hindi and English. But if you go to the southern part, it's Tamil. If you go a little bit north of that, um, it's, it's Malayalam. It's Telugu. Um, it's well, of Betty course, it's Malayalam. I mean, come on. You, everybody knows that. I know, and I know you've been working oh, on your yeah. Malayalam, so yeah. next, yeah. But it's all these different languages. I had no idea. I think we all, I mean... Man, no. I would think is just yeah, in, look, India, India is India. You speak Indian or you right. know, whatever. I mean, English, again, is going to help you. But these places that are unreached, so that becomes one of the great barriers to the gospel because you've got literally hundreds and hundreds of languages. Not all of them even have a Bible that's been translated. So, you know, think of some of these people groups that are 60,000 people uh, and they don't have a, a translated Bible. So you have to get at them through another language or maybe a uh, sort of a, a partial recording. And that, so that's what we do. I mean, we have the treasure in over 6,000 languages. Uh, it's not a whole Bible on all of them, but many times we're, we're going into some of these minor languages and, 
and recording just segments or an evangelistic message, just something to introduce them to the gospel. But that is one of the great barriers. Um, you've got the Hindu culture. You've got all of the, the diversity of people, groups, and languages. Um, and also you've got a, 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 an incredible influence of Islam uh, that is going on in India as well. In fact, I think it's they, they said that they keep changing the years a little bit, but it's going to be between 2050 and 2060. Not only will India be the most populated Hindu country in the world, but simultaneously, it will be the most populated Muslim country in the world. Wow. Let's take a look at some of these pictures uh, that you've got. This is of uh, people in India. Looks like a, a, a woman's group uh, looking at the treasure. Is that a, a listening group? That's exactly right. So when we send treasures in, in this language, I think this one uh, might be in Hindi. So they'll gather around. And the beautiful thing about these oral cultures, Rusty, is that they're conditioned, their daily lives as very normal. So they do things together. They wash their clothes together. Uh, they go out to the fields together. Um, they cook their meals together. And so the, the cultures are very community oriented. And when, that's such a huge benefit with the listening groups because you drop a treasure in there. Now that might go on for two or three hours. So they will wow. just sit there and listen to the word of God. And that, that becomes a formation for um, our, our, our house churches, basically. Uh, so it's, uh, that, that's, people are seeing a listening group right there. There's another woman, and she's all by herself holding up a treasure, looking very happy about it. Yeah. You know, we hear stories uh, at World Mission regularly about the power of the word of God. There's a, there's a great verse in Isaiah 55 that talks about the word of God will not return void. It, it associates it to, uh, you can't relate to this one, uh, the snow coming down from the heavens, rain, you can, right? You can align with that, right? You don't see right, snow. Right. Don't see a lot of snow in Arizona, although oh. if I drive an hour north, I can see it. Okay, there yeah. you go. So it associates, the Bible does, it says, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and don't leave the earth without um, accomplishing its purpose or without returning void, that is the effect of the word of God. It will not return void. And so what we hear so many times, Rusty, is stories of people just being healed. And that is the story of this precious uh, young lady here. She was, um, a lot of times in India, people get involved in the occult, uh, and they, they get involved in idol worship, and she was possessed. She literally was possessed because she opened up her, her life to the tree. So they took her to the doctor. Doctors give her medicine. Nothing happens. They say, well, let's take her to the witch doctor. So they take her to the witch doctor. Nothing happens. Meanwhile, her father was walking by this group of people who are listening to a treasure. And he starts listening in his own language. And he hears about this doctor named Jesus who's healing people of all kinds of diseases. He hears that story in the Gospels. And he, and he says to himself, I, I want to learn more about this doctor. And so he literally grabs the treasure, right? Grabs the treasure. And he takes it home to his daughter and Rusty, God just healed her, just delivered wow. suppression. Uh, and that's, I mean, you, you can't fake that. That look on her face, uh, that is someone who's been set free. And so in, in India, there's a lot of bondage and it's just the power of the word of God doing what only it can do. Wow, that is amazing. What a great story. Uh, there's a picture of three guys uh, in front of a motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're praying for that, if I'm not mistaken. You know, they've got their 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 hand. They're kind of gathering around. They're, you know, kind of celebrating, but also uh, really dedicating it. One of the strategies World Mission will do, so not only are we sending the treasures out there, Rusty, but it is quite a chore to get it to the places that it's going to have the impact. So we don't want it just to go through the airport or wherever it's shipped to, but it has to get out there. And a lot of times that requires, you know, for our guys to, uh, and, and ladies, I'll add, for hours and hours of, of navigating difficult roads. So we'll send motorcycles or we'll buy motorcycles. And so our evangelists and missionaries will take these motorcycles and load up a, a backpack full of treasures and just start targeting villages. So, you know, we send, we send uh, sources like that, like that motorcycle to get the job done. Nice. And, uh, uh, we got a, a little video clip. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, yeah. Let's play. Maybe I can play it, have you talk over it. Yeah. Uh, fire. Yes, we're be seeing things like that on our trip too, right? We will be seeing things like that. Um, we will be meeting the people who lead the groups because, you know, sometimes when you go into these places, it's really important that you understand where the treasure went. We don't want to just airdrop them in and say, God bless. So, yeah. uh, we, 
We, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not like driving. We're not driving it like pizza and, and waiting for a tip and leaving. Yeah, no. exactly. Don't don't let it you know whack you on the head as we <laughs> talk about this cargo plane, right? Uh, but we we want to bring humanity to it because you know as wonderful as the advances in technology are, including you know airplanes were the first generation in history that can be anywhere in the world in 24 hours. That's wonderful resource, right? You got satellites flying over the top of North Africa and in the Middle East, uh, and you've got all kinds of cool technologies. But the humanity of discipleship making is critical and imperative for the long-term process because, you know, converts become disciples, right? Anyone can raise their hand and say, I want to follow Jesus. Give me the bag of rice. And what are they, is that going that life-changing process going to be initiated? That takes people, that's humanity, someone journeying uh, with you and, and helping you navigate life. And so we invest heavily, Rusty, in raising up these leaders so they can go in and follow up with the treasures and talk to people and, you know, work them through some difficult things. Because a lot of these places, as you know, there's a lot of persecution. There's a lot of difficulty and adversity. And you need somebody who loves you and cares about you to help you navigate that. Absolutely. Well, um, one of the things we're asking for is some help uh, to help us get these treasures over there. Um, one of my friends, Pat Hickey, uh, he's doing, he, buy, he got 10 treasures. Hey, thanks, and- Pat. Thank you, Pat. And we're going to bring those there and show everybody where Pat's treasures are going. And so you can see, you know, where your donations are going. It's not going for us to go party. That I guarantee you. It's not going for me to get a bunch of equipment. That I guarantee you. Um, You know, it's not for for him to be living in a big mansion. Um, That I guarantee you, too. I mean, all these things, you know, I can attest from a guy that's, you know, I'm not in world mission. If, and if it was an organization that wasn't uh, doing what they said they were doing, I wouldn't be working with them. So, um, I'm confident that your donation goes to the right place. And I'm going to personally with Greg, take your donation and we're going to take the treasures that you help get each treasure costs about $40. And we're going to personally take those treasures and hand them to someone And we're going to videotape it. And we're going to show where those treasures are going. And so, Pat, your donation, I'm going to show everybody where those 10 treasures that you donated are going. And, you know, I can't think of a better way to see the the work of God um, being spread and see that the gift of your hard-earned money is going to the right places. Greg? You know, just like that verse, Rusty, I mean, as the rain, think about it. We have a, an opportunity to have the impact of the rain that comes down from the heaven and waters the earth and nourishes it and allows it to grow and become beautiful. That's the visual of the power of the word of God. So as our listeners on the Great Commission update, uh, that's the kind of impact that you can have as you're helping Rusty and I uh, bring these treasures, deliver them to people's lives. Just like this precious young Indian lady who was set free. That was not an intellectual conversation, a debate she had with somebody. That was the power of the Word of God setting an individual free. And so we want to take as many of these treasures in there as we can because there's so many people, uh, the Rohingya, the Bengali, the Yadav, all these different people groups uh, that have not heard the message of Christ for the first time in their lives. So please, if you would, go to worldmission.cc, worldmission.cc, not dot com, not dot com. Dot cc. What does cc mean? You know, I've never heard of a dot cc. Uh, Christ centered. Ah. It's, it's not exactly. It's actually. Oh, you, uh, made, you made that up. Well, it helps people to. That's number, true. Right? That's true. So, okay. Yeah. Worldmission.cc. And uh, any donations would help. And if you've got a business or you'd like to be acknowledged, hey, we'd love to do it. So please, uh, on your donation on the website, just say, hey, my business is, uh, you know, Peoria Ford in Arizona, where Pat Hickey is, and um, we'll we'll say it. It's you know, it's our honor. We appreciate it so much, and it's going to make a, a great deal. And um, again, I'm kind of asking a lot of stupid questions about going on this trip, and uh, just because I, I kind of want you to feel like you're going on the trip too, and what you have to do to prepare. Like I'm yeah. hiking every single day. I haven't passed a couple of days. I'm starting to get nervous. But basically, okay. every single day, I've been hiking and working out and trying to eat great. right. And I can't, you can't see it. I don't know. No, it's it's happening. You know, I'm hope by the time I'm done, you know, I'm going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think I'm hoping when I come back, 
You know, <laughs> maybe maybe Pierce Brosnan, something like Brad Pitt. You're gonna what happened to Rusty? Why is Brad Pitt there? That's I know, cool. but yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, it's it takes a lot of um, planning and work to do these mission trips. It's it's not it's not easy. Although Greg Freed's probably second hat by now. No, never. It's it's never a been there, done that attitude. Never. Every time is fresh, exciting, exhilarating. Uh, always go into it with the attitude of what are you going to do on this trip, guy? Right. And, you know, you're always meeting new people and it's it's fun to bring friends like you along. But, you know, we're documenting this, buddy. That, that's what's super exciting yes. is you and I will experience it, but we're going to document it for all of our friends uh, at the Great Commission Update. Now, see, here's the difference between Greg who is a really good guy, missionary, and Rusty, who is, I don't know what I am. Greg, you know, Greg's got this for, we're going to Bangladesh and Nepal, and I go, wait a second, but we're stopping in Qatar, where it's like the <laughs> coolest city in the world, where they, they make it, <laughs> making casinos out of the out of the ocean and, and everything. They got Ferrari World there. How much time are we going to be there, Greg? I think we're there 20 minutes as we go from plane to plane. No! Come on. So yeah, that's the <laughs> maybe next time. That's the, maybe that's next the time. difference. Yes. Yeah. Greg's like, no, no, we gotta spend more time on the Poon Trail. Seriously, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta... Let's go. <laughs> come on, let's go. Yeah, come come on. We gotta go more hiking. But Ferrari World is there. <laughs> they got a hotel, Greg, where it's a hundred dollars to look in the lobby. That's how what? cool. Yeah. Not uh, not in I'm glad you didn't tell me all this before. I mean, maybe the layover would have been <laughs> You know, 12 hours or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and, oh, that's the other thing. My, my layover was literally like 20 minutes. And I call it to go from, to land from America, get there, change in Doha, and then go to, uh, you know, Nepal or where Bangladesh, where the first stop is. And I call the travel agent and I go, don't you think that's a little short of time? He says, well, it's legal. <laughs> yeah, it might be legal, but is it possible we might be 15 minutes late. Well, and then they changed it. So these are the little things. The, the little things. The little things. The little things. And, and, then we, and then we got this coronavirus coming, just creeping its way. Yeah. So yeah. this is going to be fun. We're good. Are We're you good. like, and at the, as I'm uh, spilling my guts and telling everybody my thoughts, Greg, are you going, yeah, <laughs> probably shouldn't have invited this guy. Ready for the adventure with you, brother. All it's right. going to be amazing. It's it going is. to be amazing. It is going to be amazing. Again, we really and and I'm having fun and joking a little bit, but you got to do it because you know it's uh it's an exciting thing. So if you would please um, help us out, just get some treasures and help it so that Greg and and his team can help spread the gospel around the world. Greg, real quick, close it out for me, brother. Yeah. Hey, thanks again. Share the Great Commission update with your friends, with your family. Rusty and I, uh, we just pour our hearts into this every week. We want to encourage you. We want to challenge you. Let you know you know some things of what God is doing. Uh, around the nations of the earth. Um, but you are, we, we just don't want to underestimate this at all um, and make sure you understand you're a part of it. Absolutely. And we appreciate you so much uh, as you watch the show and share it with your friends. Absolutely. May God bless you. I'm Rusty Humphreys for Greg Kelly. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time here on the Great Commission Update.